Hi everyone and welcome to the Chat and Vibe series for the upcoming Vitality Festival. If you haven't heard about the Vitality Festival, it starts on October the 31st. We've got 70 amazing speakers presenting over the course of nine days and it's a free online health and wellbeing festival for frontline workers and anybody that should need it. And today we've got Maura Schill here with us and we're talking to you about your presentation and your involvement in the Vitality Festival. Nice to have you here today, Maurice. Thank you, Tanya. It's a pleasure to be here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what's brought you here to where you are and what you're doing today? Yeah, so um, I'm originally uh, from Europe. I'm half French, half uh, German. I moved to Australia about four years ago and um, came here straight out of uni, didn't really know what I was doing. And uh, about two years into my stint in between a job and trying to find something new, um, I got inspired by my younger brother, um, or he at least piqued my curiosity um, around appreciation uh, because he started doing this thing in short, giving people juju points every time they did something nice. It was his way to show gratitude. Uh, and that piqued my curiosity and got me to explore the concept and try and understand, well, what is the application of gratitude? What are the benefits? And the more I found out about it, um, the more passionate I became. And uh, when uh, I got the opportunity to share some of this with, with the frontliners and when we had our first conversation, I thought, you know, what better way to, to give back and to share some of that learning uh, especially during these times, it's just such an important uh, tool to have in uh, in your toolkit. Yeah, absolutely. And tell us, you are the CEO and the founder of Juju. Tell us a little bit about your Juju concept. I love it. Yeah, well, um, as I was saying, it all started with my brother. So his name is Julian and his nickname is Juju. Uh, and so I've named the company sort of as an homage to, to him and, and to appreciate his inspiration. Um, but in, in short, what it's become is a digital way to express and share appreciation. So you use this idea of a juju to share a, a thank you note um, as you might on a card or uh, you know, an email, an SMS, um, and connect that with some form of media, like a GIF, a picture. Um, and you can then send that and share that with the people that are important in your life. So it's just a fun little tool to, to get appreciation out there in the world. Um, but because it's digital and it gets shared, it also becomes quite visible. So it's also about inspiring others to say, hey, well, that I, I now remember I was going to, you know, um, help. Uh, John and uh, I, I never thanked him for that or whatever comes out of it like it's it's about inspiring uh, other people as well. I love it I think it's such a great concept and it's really great to be able to show our appreciation which is part of what this Vitality Festival is about really is being able to show our appreciation for all the frontliners and all the pe people who have stood strong for, for us and for our kids through this time so I love it. And so tell us a little bit more about gratitude. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people at the moment are probably not really feeling so grateful for everything that's going on. Um, why would people want to bring gratitude into their life and potentially into their practice each day? Yeah, uh, that's a fantastic question. Gratitude is definitely something I've heard come up more and more in conversation, whether that's because I'm engaging in those sort of conversations more. If you look on Google uh, trends and you type in gratitude, you'll see it's steadily gone up over the last uh, 10 years. So it's definitely become something people are talking more and more about. Um, if you had asked me two or three years ago what gratitude was, I would, uh, would have said, is it about saying thank you? Um, you know, isn't, isn't that just a polite, uh, thing to do. Um, but since then, and if that was the tip of the iceberg, it's just a massive concept that has very deep roots in our psychology, 
uh, and probably in, as well in the way we've evolved as very social creatures. Um, but I guess some very practical and useful things around gratitude is that a lot of studies have been done on the effects of gratitude, uh, people practicing it regularly, um, the frequency uh, changes. So sometimes they test it, what happens if you do it once a week or uh, three times a day. Um, but what they've always seen is a positive correlation between people who practice gratitude and uh, their general mental well-being, how optimistic they are, how happy they feel, how motivated they are. Um, but it then also goes a step further because, and I think everyone has experienced this for themselves, if you feel good, uh, if you feel happy, if you feel good about who you are and where you are, you're much more likely to engage in a meaningful conversation with a friend to help them out somehow. So that strengthens relationships as well. Um, of course, gratitude at its core is about a relation between you and someone else or you and the world. So it's also a great way to strengthen that. Um, but people uh, who practice gratitude also are more motivated to, to do exercise. Um, so the, the benefits are, uh, you know, they're, they're all over the place. There's so many of them. Mm. Um, and uh, at the very core, it, it helps us fill up our cup. We can, you know, the, the saying goes, there's either a cup half full or half empty. Gratitude is really to always look at it. It's always full. Mm. Right? You can choose to see the cup always full. And when our cup is full, it can start overflowing and we can start giving back and contributing back. And um, I think that's really the core, a powerful source of well-being is when we start helping others. Mm. Oh, look, I love that. And I know for myself, I do a gratitude practice, not every day, but most days. And it was interesting because when I first started doing it, it was hard. You know, there was the obvious things to be grateful for my kids and, you know, all things like that. But then after a while, you sort of started to run out of things to be grateful for. And so it was interesting. I found myself got throughout the day, whenever I was doing things, I was looking for things to be grateful for. And it almost shifted my mindset into that positive um, frame where I was looking for, for things to be grateful for. And I must say, even in during these times, you know, I mean, so much has been stripped away from us, you know, and, and some of our freedom taken away. But it's interesting because it, I find myself finding it easier to be grateful for things and things that I took for granted and people I took for granted before all of a sudden now there's this potential of seeing people or you know going out for dinner again you know you feel so grateful for the little things absolutely and uh, yeah, the gratitude block, you know, getting to that stage where you're like, I've written everything I could potentially be grateful for. I think that happens to everyone. Um, I think there is that, it's a good place to start. Once you start and you realize, oh, why am I only grateful for these things? It's an opportunity to expand potentially the comfort zone of our gratitude. Um, and I think the more you practice it, exactly what's happened to you, you start noticing these things in the world, in the moment. Um, and I think that's when it becomes really powerful because uh, when something happens that's potentially not the most positive or mm. what you'd expected, um, it can be quite easy to be disappointed, to get uh, depressed is maybe a strong word, but to give up. Whereas if you're quite grateful and can see the positive in, in that interaction, you could potentially turn that failure into a lesson really quickly and move on. Um, and so there's, yeah, it's it, practicing it regularly gets you to that stage. And, and that's a really important part to be. Mm. I love that. I was, I was told um, one time when I was discussing with a friend, we were talking about what to be grateful for because I was running out of ideas, that block. And it was interesting. She was, made the suggestion, you know, you should also be grateful for your lungs, for breathing all the time and your large intestine. And she took me on this whole gratitude journey around the internal organs. And that was quite amazing because, you know, you don't even think about that. That's just things that automatically happen. And then all of a sudden when you slow down, and and take it apart piece by piece it's it's incredible how many things that we just we take for granted absolutely i love that i that's uh, one of the things i remind myself of i use the concept of you're standing on other people's shoulders 
Um, and, you know, I take that a step further. It's the the ability for my body to function is because of everything going on on mm -hmm. here. Realizing that gives you an option to say, well, wow, I'm actually really grateful that I'm healthy and happy and that I woke up this morning. Um, but it can also start giving you gratitude for the things we really take for granted. Um, you know, especially, you know, what um, this festival is all about is, showing gratitude and appreciating and giving back to these people we very often take for granted um, right because we live uh, you know australia is quite a wealthy country we're used to all of these things um you don't have to to go very far uh you know indonesia for example a lot of australians would have been there on holidays you can all of a sudden see all of these things we take for granted are for a lot of people a luxury mm -hmm. um, and again it's just seeing that oh wow what i can do and what i have isn't just me and there's so much to be grateful for yeah amazing so good and so the the workshop that you're presenting at the vitality festival is staying mentally fit with gratitude how come there's the word fit in there tell me a little bit about that <laughs> that's a great question um look over the last two years uh going out there and talking to people about gratitude, one of the things I've noticed is because it is a, a psychological or a mental concept, it's, it's invisible in many ways, right? We, we can't really um, see it. And I felt that connecting uh, the, the gratitude and our mental fitness and using that language makes it very easy to compare the physical fitness. Mm -hmm. And in the same way that we, you know, if we want to, run a marathon we we've got to train we we've, we've got to do practices every day the same thing is true for our mental fitness as well um, if we sit on the couch all day we're not going to get fit if we go about our day and don't look after our our mental or our, our mindset we're not going to get mentally fit um, and i see gratitude as an important uh, tool in that in in that area um you know i think meditation is another extremely powerful one um exercise is actually also a really good thing for mental fitness um reading uh, spending less time on social media they're all uh, things you can do to strengthen that mental fitness um and i just wanted to to make it something people can easily hold on to and say okay this is why i'm actually doing it mm. I love that. And I think it's really important the word, you know, fit for me also has that um, connotation of action. And I think, you know, there's, there's so many great things on offer at this festival um, out in the world at large. And there's a lot of people reading and going to workshops. But I think unless we take action, unless we implement all these different things into our life, unless we practice it time and time again, it, you know, it, we can't, program ourselves to be a marathon runner without running around the block <laughs> you know it's the same sort of thing so i love that you're bringing that into into your talk and so what are you what have what have you got on the cards at the moment for you what have you got that you're positive and excited about coming up in the future yeah uh just so much because we're really starting to wrap our head around what it what is it that we do and what is how are we engaging with people about gratitude in, in the larger context and so we're um, running a, a few really exciting initiatives uh, in two weeks it's mental health week so we're doing some fundraising workshops um, for that so that's something to be really excited about again way to give back um, where we're talking with, with different companies about applications um, of, of what we do in, in their business so that's um, really excited. Uh, on a more personal note, we recently got a puppy. Uh, so that's just something I uh, cannot uh, <laughs> be uh, nothing but excited about. You know, it just, just brings so much joy um, into my life every day. Uh, so very excited and optimistic about that. And then, of course, uh, you know, one the good news was we had recently uh, they're bringing timeline forward um, looking forward to seeing some friends going to see a friend tomorrow in the park um, simple things like that as well are just making me really excited and 
put all of that together with some good weather coming our way and Yay. things are looking really bright at the moment. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maurice, for sharing your wisdom with us. We can't wait to see your workshop at the Vitality Festival. Guys, if you haven't joined up yet, the link is below. Please join and share with all your friends. I'm also going to include a link to Maurice so you can get in touch with him if you want to know anything more about um, gratitude or the Juju concept that he has. I can't recommend Maurice enough. So thank you and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Tanya. And I really look forward to participating in this event and uh, hopefully seeing some of the people who are watching this there. Thank you.